um, great energy for opening night. You know, I, I think our guys came out with a lot of passion. Uh, we set the tone on the defensive end. Um, I thought we did some really good things. Uh, I know we're going to talk about the fact that we scored 99 points. Uh, I'm proud that we were able to turn them over 20 times. Um, I thought we did a great job keeping them in front. Uh, they have great size for a mid-major team. And I thought we did a good job, especially on Everett in the second half. So give our guys a lot of credit, proud of them. Um, we played on both ends of the floor. Uh, we were able to make shots. We, I thought we shared the ball. When you look at it, we had 19 assists on 48 field goals, uh, 11 three-pointers. Uh, we were fishing from the free throw line. So we'll take the game, we'll continue to build on it, and we'll continue to get better. Questions? How encouraging is it that there were no lulls? <laughs> How encouraging was it that you didn't have any lulls? I thought it was great. You know, and, and that's what we're trying to work on when you've got some older guys. You know, like I give a guy like John Kel Joyner, you know, you can talk to him and, and you know, he can lead our younger guys. I, I thought... You know, without saying it, Dequavion Smith was fantastic tonight. You know, he did a great job, very efficient, uh, made some really good plays, but he played on both ends of the floor. But it was good that we didn't have that, those two or three minute times where we didn't score. Coach, nothing against last year's team. It just looked like this year's team just played a lot of fun out there. They had a good time out there. And is that what you saw too? Well, I, I thought last year's team played hard. We just were limited. You know, I thought we had fun at, fun at times, but this is a good bunch. Um, they they bonded, you know, both on and off the court. And we're going to be a continue to work in progress. We'll continue to get better. This is one game. But if you told me I could play one game and try to build on something, we'll continue to do that. Kevin, yeah, what's the significance of just playing so well in game one after everything you guys went through? I thought it was great. You know, it's this is the toughest game, in my opinion, in college, the first game of the year. I don't care who it is around the country. It's so tough, no matter who you're playing against, because you just don't know. And, you, you know, you want to get off to a good start, which we did. I thought we played well, which is great. But you can't say that for everybody. So it's tough. And I've been on the other side of it at the first game where we were able to squeak away with a win, but we didn't play well. I thought everything went as we planned tonight. We talked a lot about the bigs, obviously, coming in and being a little bit more offensive so far this season. What were your thoughts on, on Dusan and – uh, DJ Burns and the way that they played tonight. Man, they were great. Uh, you know, it's, it's I, and you, I usually tune the crowd out because I'm locked into it. Boy, when when DJ came in and made those baskets, you could just hear everybody like, "Whoa, here we go now!" <laughs> and so those guys were tremendous. Um, you know, I consider both of those guys starters. I think between the two of them, I think we had 18 points and 14 rebounds. You know, DJ Burns um, had nine of them, and so they they, they played well. They, we have. Two guys that we feel like we can throw the ball inside and score, but they both are getting better. Dushan's more, uh, a little bit better on the defensive end, but trust me, we're working with DJ to get better at the, in those areas. But I love it that we can score some inside baskets. DJ was really fighting for some rebounds there too. What were your thoughts on, on especially that one that he laid out for early on? They, they, Corey, what makes those two guys good is their competition and practice is unbelievable. Like they really know. Half of the time they're fouling each other every day, but at the end of the day they really make each other better. And I, you know, DJ's playing hard. Um, I'm proud of him because one of the knocks on him is that he couldn't rebound the basketball. He can score. I thought he did a good job defensively and rebounding the basketball. Coach, talk to us about how Jarkel Joyner played. Seven career high for assists with eight. Um, what's he mean for this team? It's when you have a veteran guard in college basketball, it goes a long way. And, you know, we, I know we talked about, you know, what John Kell did tonight. He had 18 and 8 and only two turnovers as much as he had to basketball. But he just worked so hard. You know, he put so much work in every day. And he'll drag someone into the gym tomorrow. Like, we're off. I don't get to see him. But I guarantee you, John Kell Joyner will be one of those guys probably in the gym with somebody else working on this game. So to have a veteran guy who could, um, the, the players respect, and plays hard on every possession. You're talking about an older guy that will pick you up full court and everybody behind some lead. So I, I'm, I'm proud of him. Along those lines, Coach, the transfers, there's some urgency to the to their season this year. Do you think that will filter down to the other guys, too, as the season goes on and maybe help them motivate those guys? Yeah, you know, th this is a confident bunch. 
and you know we're gonna we're gonna have some a lot of success. We're gonna have some ups and downs, but at the end of the day, I think because they're veterans, we can we won't stay in that moment for a long time. I think those guys are able to fight through some adversity and everything else. And um, you know it, it's good to have older guys. You know college basketball has it's been proven that if you got older guys, you have a lot more success. And we just happen to have some veteran guys this year. Coach, it's just one game, but it's obvious that Joanna and Smith really gel together. They combined for 44 points, 13 assists. How good do you think this backcourt can be? I think it's a talented backcourt. You know, we had similar numbers when you look at the way Sebron and the map, but we didn't have a bunch of guys around him to contribute. You know, the next leading scorer was Jericho. With this bunch, those two guys really feed off each other. I can move either one of them to the one and two. We're playing um, to Craig a little bit more at one at times. But they, they both have a supporting cast where they don't have to take so many bad shots. And I think that's what helps them. Um, they, they have jail. I give a lot of credit to Jarkel, who's coming in, who's a you know a guy who's coming in who was the point guard of, of his own team in the SEC and kind of embraced a young man that he knows is going to take shots. Um, and he's been good for to Quavion. You have an update on uh, Greg Dan? Yeah, Greg, Greg, Greg <coughs> was bothering him a little bit. We had a, he got an injection in his knee, and we just decided to hold him out. There's nothing major wrong with him or anything else. He just he got a shot, and it, it really is kind of aggravated him a little bit. Yeah. And, he, and he got the shot on Saturday after the game, and it's kind of been really sore on him. Any chance you're seeing him in the game again? I hope so. That's the plan. I don't want to say until I you know, diagnose him on Wednesday, we're going to be off tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we'll see. But that's the plan. There's a situation where Smith was really jacked up after hitting a couple straight baskets. If he shows emotion, then the fans get geeked up. Are you wanting this team to play with a lot of emotion and, and create that enthusiasm? You know, the word that I've used is I want them to play with a lot of energy. And um, it, it's great when your star player is playing with that type of emotion. It's great when you sub and the guys that come out of the game who's playing the most minutes are – the most energetic guy on the sidelines. And that helps. And, you know, obviously, you know, we talked about, you know, just continue to play. You know, we, we this year's team, we want to block out as much noise as we, we get or hear and just lock in and just lock into the locker room and continue to get better. And they also said that they were, even though the score, it was, you know, it was, they had the game in control, they were sort of playing each set as if, okay, this is a, you know, devoid of the score. So, so, you know, win the set, win the play type of mentality. Uh, how, how does that make you feel? Yeah, we were. We talk about winning the four-minute segment. Every time we go into a timeout, let's, let's win the four-minute segment. At halftime, you know, when you have such a big lead, I think we were up 28, and sometimes these are, they, they're still kids, and it's hard to maintain and to, you know, play at a high level when you got so much of a bigger lead. So we talked about, hey, play like a scrimmage. I want it to be 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's figure out how we can win the half. And I thought our guys did a good job in the second half. I thought we came out, um, you know, the first two or three minutes of the second half, did some really good stuff. They scored a little bit, and then we kind of locked in. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Travel safe.